On this YouTube channel, I teach about working with concrete for decorative applications or as a hobby. But as a result, you end up with a lot of extra concrete and little bits left in the bucket at the end of the day. So what do you do with all of this leftover concrete? So you've got all this leftover concrete, or you've got more than you want. It's hard to get rid of. It's expensive to get rid of. What are my other options? What are better options for dealing with all this leftover stuff that you're left with at the end of the day after a concrete pour? I mean, you never want to come up 10% short on whatever you're making. So I always teach that make a little bit extra. It's not that expensive that you can't afford to waste a little bit because you need enough for what you're doing. And coming up just a little bit short is really inconvenient for a bunch of technical reasons. So. A really good solution here that I use right away is get some small molds, some small things that you can make. I've got this guy here is a, a cast piece of concrete that I've painted, and this does not use very much material at all. So if I've got, you know, a chunk like this big here left at the bottom of the bucket, heck, that'd be enough for two, maybe even three of those things. And so that's a great tip right away is get some smaller molds such that you can Whatever's left in the bucket, you can quickly apply it into one of your molds. Keep those molds clean, oiled, ready to go all the time so that whatever you've got left over from what you're working on doesn't just become a lump of concrete that now you have to pay to get rid of. It's something that you can minimize your losses with. So aside from having some small molds, or maybe you've already got some small molds, but you've still got leftover concrete, and if you work with this stuff enough, it starts to pile up on you. What else can you do? Well, I'll tell you what I do. So I like to do stuff like I'll have a bunch of leftover concrete. I've made all my molds, or more often my molds are all full and I still have some extra. So I might take some of this white concrete like you saw here, and I'll mix some green paint in with it. Like I know what it's gonna do for coloration, but I wanna do a test sample. So I mix some in and I just put that into the bottom of a little plastic container, you know, something like a little Tupperware container and just let it set up. And once it's fully cured, you can usually just pop this puck right out cleanly and reuse that container over and over again. And now you're left with a pretty interesting color sample. We can see exactly what color that we could get with that. Or, you know, more along those lines, what if we start mixing some color like white and brown together to see, you know, what's that gonna look like? And further to that, acid stains, paints, concrete stains. There's so many ways that you can add color to concrete after the fact. So you never want, really want to do that on your finished piece as an experiment. Concrete colorations is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit of a, a tricky subject to get consistent, reliable colorations with the process that you're using. It would be a great idea if you had a bunch of extra concrete pieces around that you could practice on without damaging, you know, the thing that you're working on. So if I'm making a project, whatever it be, a plant pot, a statue, a big lump of concrete, whatever it is, I'll keep a little bit extra and that little extra piece, once it's cured, I'm going to practice painting. I might have something like this green one and that's what I'm going to make my cast out of. But I was thinking of doing like a darker green speckled paint on it. Like you can see it in your mind and how, how it would look, but it would be great to have a test piece where you can kind of just do a little a color sample on it and visualize how it's going to look on the larger project that you're working on before you're committed to the full thing. So there's a bunch of different things that you could do just by having some extra concrete around in terms of coloration and experimentation with things like acid stains or paints to see if you're able to achieve the color that you're looking for. So let's say you did that. What else can you do? Well, I will tell you. You could take these color samples that we've made and you could throw it into a bucket of water. What happens now? Does that do anything to the color fastness or does the coloration that you've added stay true? Take it out from the bucket of water and toss it into your freezer. What happened now? And doing things like this will allow you to test the limitations of the things that you're making. Further to that, if I made a product like one of these little smiley faces, but there was a bunch of honeycombing in it and I didn't vibrate it well enough and it's not something that I'd wanna sell or give away to anybody, instead of just throwing it in the garbage, you might want to do something like break it. See how much, you know, damage it can withstand. Is it able to go in the freezer? If you can put it into the freezer after it was soaking in water and it freezes solid and it doesn't crack or break, well, now you know that the piece that you've made is probably suitable for weathering outdoors in cold climate environments. 
you know, you wouldn't have known that otherwise. And you wouldn't want to sell a piece to somebody and tell them, oh yeah, you can leave it outside all winter. And everybody who did that, it ends up breaking. It would be a great idea for you to learn more about the products you're making and the limitations of them by breaking a couple of them. Don't break the good ones. Wait to the ones that, you know, are slightly less perfect and then break those ones for your experimentations. So there's a couple of different things we've talked about already, but what else can you do with all of this leftover concrete? If you were really hard up, I guess you could put on some safety glasses and grab a big rock hammer and just start bashing this stuff into small half inch or three quarter inch size chunks. And at that point, it's essentially gravel. You could add that into a concrete mix to increase the bulk of your yield. It's not something that I really recommend doing, but here's a kind of an, uh, a different spin on that, which I would recommend doing. I'm not into pulverizing my concrete into making my own gravel, but what I might do, let's say where I were going to pour a thick slab of concrete for something. Well, I wouldn't mind taking this guy or in a couple more like them and setting them inside of that pour, as long as I'm still leaving a suitable thickness for the application. What I'm saying is don't, you know, make your concrete really thin because you've got all this waste material in there and now you're just skinning that over time. I wouldn't do that. But you could definitely use this inside of, uh, you know, forms or something like that to take up a little bit of space because the material is similar to what you're going to be pouring on top of. When you start adding dissimilar materials, that's where you can get into trouble. But if it's just mortar or concrete and you're going to be pouring mortar or concrete, you could take a lot of the extra stuff that you have and just lose it as fill inside of those forms. Perhaps one tip I would give you, if I were going to do that, I would be sure that all of these pieces are thoroughly saturated with water. I wouldn't want them to put them in there dry and thirsty because they're going to steal moisture from your mix otherwise, and that would be a bad thing. That's a bunch of different stuff that you could potentially do with your waste concrete, your leftover concrete. What's one other tip I can give you? Well, I guess that tip would be keep it small. Let's say you've done all these other things, you just have more leftover, what the heck am I gonna do with this? It's okay if you have some baseball size chunks or maybe even a little bigger, but any bigger than this, and what I would do is I would go out of my way to place it onto a piece of plastic or wood or something like that, and I would trowel it smooth, no more than maybe an inch or an inch and a half in thickness, and then I'd take the trowel on edge and I'd just kind of cut it up like an ice cube tray more or less. And what that's going to enable you to do is now you've got this big slab of concrete the next day, you tap that thing with a hammer and it's going to break into more manageable size cubes. And that's something that you can get rid of a lot easier than having one big piece of concrete. That's something you never want to do. Don't leave a great big leftover waste hunk of concrete that's too big for you to lift, too big for you to break it in half or down into smaller components. That would be bad. One more tip that I want you to have. If you deal with a lot of concrete, anything from desktop hobby concrete all the way up to the contractor level, here's something that you should know about how to get rid of your concrete. First of all, if you bring your concrete to the dump as general refuse or waste, you are going to pay an enormous amount of money to get rid of that concrete because you're charged by the pound for general waste and concrete is extremely heavy. What you want to do is you want to bring your concrete to a concrete recycler or some sort of dump or landfill that has the capacity to accept just concrete. So you can't bring this order in with all of your other general waste. You have to just bring in your concrete and you bring it in, you dump it all, they weigh it up and they, they charge you accordingly for the fact that this is concrete that you're getting rid of and not just bags of garbage. Another tip here, and this is a really important one. A lot of times these situations where I'm describing a special recycler that is able to get rid of your waste concrete for you, they will have two different options. One will be concrete with steel and one will be concrete without steel. That's very important. Concrete with steel is far more expensive to get rid of than concrete without steel. I don't actually know this, but I suspect the concrete without steel just gets sent into giant machines that pulverize it into aggregate again, whereas the stuff with steel in it, that's a little bit harder to deal with. And so that's why they charge you a lot more money to get rid of that. So always be sure, and especially at the desktop level, it's pretty easy for us to get to keep the concrete with steel away from the concrete without steel in terms of all your waste debris. Like there's no steel at all in this. It's just a lump of mortar that's solidified here. So if I'm careful where I choose to recycle this concrete, I could probably get away with paying a very, very small amount of money for a relatively large size load of concrete without steel. Ultimately, the goal is to waste as little as possible, whether you're a contractor or you're just working with concrete as a hobby. 
But I hope some of these tips are helpful. I hope you can implement them, help to reduce on the amount of extra waste material that you have, make more products, learn more techniques, learn the limitations of the things that you're making, and pay as little as possible to get rid of whatever's left over in terms of waste concrete. I hope you found this information helpful.